Russia. For centuries, a land of mystery and a timeless cradle of culture. This place of magical light has been fertile ground for generations of master artists, each with a distinct and unique style, but also immediately recognizable as Russian. The names are legendary in the world of fine art. Ilya Repin, namesake of the world-renowned Repin Institute, set the bar high for generations to come. Isaac Levitan, a master of mood. Valentin Serov, who studied with Repin from an early age. Repin Institute graduate and Taos icon, Nikolai Fechin. Fedora Zakharov, born to a peasant family, educated in Moscow, nominated as the People's Painter of the Ukraine. Honored artist of the Russian Federation, Nikolai Timkov, considered one of the greatest landscape painters of the 20th century. Architect turned artist, Vladimir Krantz. The Carpenter's Son, Vasily Petrovich Kosenkov, and so many others. Since Tsar Peter the Great and his successors began a tradition of paying for the best artists in the world to come to Russia and train, a 300-year pyramid of knowledge has grown to become a beacon of insight for painters worldwide. One common thread that ties this historic past to our present is the legacy of the Russian masters, skillful artists who were also great and prolific teachers. Perhaps more than in any other theater of fine art, the Russian masters have had a long and lasting impact on those who have followed, striving to chronicle their world with brush and paint on canvas. Of today's representational painters, the ones who go outdoors to chase the light and the ever-changing colors of the day, hoping to translate the authenticity of the moment into shared emotion and a true sense of beauty. Two whose amazingly similar paths brought them from apprenticeship through mentorship to master artist are George Gallo and Don Solly. Both Gallo and Solly struggled from an early age to become artists and both, through simple twists of fate, happened to meet, work for, and learn from two great Russian masters. George Cherepov and Sergei Bongart. The director of the gallery uh, said to me, you know, you need to go meet the Russian bear. You need to go up to Idaho. He's having a workshop currently now. And he was talking about Sergei Bongart. I had never met anyone with uh, Sergei's knowledge because when I saw him do his demonstration, it was just unbelievable. I'd never seen anyone paint a painting like he had done it. I mean, he had a handful of brushes. Uh, he had a huge palette of paint. You know, and uh, he would squeeze the paint out in front of it. And he'd you know squeeze out more paint than anyone had ever squeezed out. You know, it's like wow. But I uh, I became his last uh, last scholarship student, last apprentice, last uh, you know helper. Uh, he uh, Sergey passed away in '85, and I remember that when he did, it was kind of like well now I won't be his teaching assistant. You know, now my path will be a a, a bit different. I ended up studying with a very brilliant Russian master who was a reluctant teacher, you know, but uh, that's what happened to me at 18. And, you know, here I was this, like, bright-eyed kid saying, could you teach me how to paint, you know? And the first time I, I knocked on the door, he thought I was there to do yard work. And when he, when I asked him, I said, look, oh, no, I want you to teach me how to paint. He slammed, he literally slammed the door in my face. He, uh, he did not teach me how to paint. That was kind of the interesting thing. He taught me how to see. And painting isn't about a clever manipulation of the brush. Painting is about how to see the world and how to, and, and how to see beauty in absolutely everything, and, and how to um, sort of retrain your, 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 your eye. You know, don't, don't accept things that trees are green and that the sky is blue. You, you know, really look, because every day, every moment, every hour, it changes, you know, and, uh, and that was his whole thing. Uh, sometimes I try to paint the wind or the, the, the flutter of aspen leaves as they fall. Sometimes the power, the force of nature, uh, to, to capture that in terms of color value and temperature. It's much more than just a, a, a mountain scene. It's much more than, you know, it's, it's back to that Bongar thing where the image, yes, is important. You know, train yourself to learn to paint the image, but it goes further than that. You know, you don't ever notice how you say like that the sunlight is like a woman and when she kisses the land with warm lips, she leaves a little color everywhere. For a kid who's just learning, you go, oh my God, what, what a brilliant idea that is. That, that sunlight is like a woman's lips just kissing everything everywhere. And there's a kind of sensuality to that thought. And if you're open to it, um, 
I mean, those are like uh, those are like the beginnings of like uh, you know of, of knocking down walls of ignorance in your head and seeing the world as a painter. It was in Alaska, in uh, Sitka, Alaska, in fact, and that was the old Russian capital of uh, of Russia, and uh, so there was a Russian influence there, and there was a uh, a guy there, uh, Dr. Bob White, who uh, hired me, an American, to come up and paint the gold rush, the story of the gold rush for Alaska. And at the same time, there were some Russian artists there that uh, Dr. Bob had uh, received permission for them to come over from the Soviet Union. But the head of the group uh, asked, so you know Arizelsky, you know, how you know this? And I said, you know, Sergei Bongart, Nikolai Feshin, and and I had some slides, uh, always out promoting myself. <clears throat> and I showed him my slides and he looked at them and he held out his hand and he said, colleague. And that was kind of the thing that's like, you know, this is a, quite a few years after, you know, Bongart's death and that I was continuing in some sort of uh, painterly way that they recognized the Russian school, you know, art of painting. And that made a huge impression on me. I, I, I can remember that it's like well that sort of changed things it's like I'm really a part of something that's much bigger than myself the gift that I've been given and I want to use it for you know uh, for something good for a, for, for a positive thing to, to be inspired to inspire others today both George Gallo and Don Solly are recognized as distinguished artists in their own right leading proponents of today's resurgent representational art movement that started as Impressionism in France, but was taken to new levels by generations of dedicated Russian painter mentors who have handed down a priceless and lasting legacy. They fill their canvases with light and color, each inspired by the technique of the great Russian master who taught them. And now they too are paying it forward, sharing their knowledge and love for the craft that illuminates the beauty in life.